Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about the Tannis engine preheat system. You have probes that go like this one right here into the cylinder. So it heats the mass of the upper cylinder so that it gives it a chance. And then you also have a power plug for applying electricity to the system so that you can warm the engine. So now let's talk more about it. And so we would like to ask you, please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now, I always wasn't a Tannis guy. When I lived in Louisiana, engine preheat wasn't an issue. It's like living in Florida. But when I moved to Ohio, I thought I was felt pretty fancy when John Maestri put one of those silicon pads on my oil sump, and then I could plug it into the inverter in the trunk of my car and warm my airplane up a bit before I went and flew it. But still, I wasn't doing a thorough preheat. Now, there's a couple of pieces of the Tannis system that we want to talk about. We have probes that go into the mass of the aluminum. This warms up the upper cylinder, and these do a much better job than the bands that go around the base of the cylinder. And then you'll have a power plug of a various sort. The new place to mount the power plug is up by the oil dipstick, and we'll see that from Don Goins's in a little while. And then you have a pad that mounts on the bottom of the oil pan, and this heats the sump and the oil up. And then the Tana system also has a probe that goes into the oil drain and it actually sits a probe in the oil to heat the oil on the other side of the bottom of the sump and here's what it looks like right here now we're going to have some video of that but that's the probe that goes into the oil and actually touches it so you have to give up one of your uh, plugs but you still keep the crush gasket and here we are looking at it it's just the the heating element now the heating elements on the tana system just so you can put a number to it the cylinder probes are all about 50 watts. The sump heater is about 50 watts. And this is about 50 watts. So you, on a four-cylinder engine, you're using about 300 watts to heat the engine. Now, you can do that, but you're going to want to wrap it in a blanket or a series of uh, sleeping bags to keep the heat in. And then here's a sump. The... Um, this is the Tana sump on the bottom, and we'll be removing this and uh, getting it ready to go back because the deal we have with Tannis was is that we're buying a new system, and we're going to be sending back all our old pieces. Now, this is on Don Goins, and this is from about five years ago. He bought this at Oshkosh, and as you can see, they mount this up here by the oil dipstick so you have a place to get to to plug it in. And then you have the probes that go into the bottom of the cylinders. Now, the new probes can go in where the rocker covers are, or they can go in here in the bottom where a lot of people use for a cylinder head temperature. But what you want to make sure is that where that probe goes in, again, it's 50 watts of energy coming out. You want to make sure it goes into some good solid metal. You wouldn't want to put this in a light part. And that's one of the reasons why the bands don't work at the base of the cylinder, because they're on the outside. The heat wants to go away, and there's nothing to conduct it to the bigger mass of the cylinder fins and the cylinder head that's all sitting out there in the airstream so you want to be able to put the heat where you can use it most and the reason for that is is because when the engine is cold the piston heats up fairly quickly the cylinder walls do not and you might have some scuffing now if you go to the Tannis website, there's a lot of different things they have on there for talking about their, their different heating systems and their cellular switches and stuff. But one of the nice things about it is, is they have some thermal imagery like right here. Now on the left side of the engine, they have the probes that stick into the cylinders. And on the right hand side, they have the bands that go around the cylinder base. Now you'll notice that the cylinder heads on the right hand side are much cooler, but you can see the hot spots of where the bands are but now look at the cylinders on the left see how they're thoroughly warm and all nice and ready to go so that's what you're looking for in an engine preheat you want something similar with the oil you want the oil to flow easily and be good and warm when it gets ready to go and you also want the metal sump that the oil sits in to be good and warm now if you leave it on all the time it's not a good thing because you'll have moisture that might be evaporating out of your oil and it'll just be floating around as a vapor wanting to cling to anything that can corrode or rust but if you shield it with a good 
tarp around it and you get a good sleeping bag and some insulation and wrap your engine really well when you're warming it like this uh, Tannis recommends even on a coldest day about six hours of these heaters with some proper insulation and your engine's going to be nice and toasty now that's why we decided to go we already had a Tannis system on the project tiger and we decided after looking at ours that it was kind of in ratty shape um, so we went ahead and we worked out a deal and we're sending it back and we're going to be getting a new system that we're going to be putting on on and we have some video of that coming up where we took it all off the uh, aircraft today and uh, played with it but again this thermal graph right here shows you why you want to preheat what you want to preheat and now let's move on to some of the other components Now there's no order of importance to the presentation here, but that's the little sump heater from the bottom of the oil sump. And uh, we're just putting it right there aside. Uh, it's got a little bit of stick on one side where it was connected to the gray paint. And then we have our probes, and these are the four probes that go in where your cylinder head temperatures go, and they warm the bulk of your cylinders on all four of them around the engine. And then you have the harness. and. Tannis has always had a red harness and after all it is an um, FAA PMA part and they have a label on it that says that for you. But anyway your whole system comes and it's ready to be installed on the aircraft. You'll want to have your mechanic check your work if you're not an AMP but it is not a hard thing to do. And then we're just taking it all. We're going to stick it in a big Ziploc bag and we're going to Put it all up with all the paperwork that uh, Tannis had supplied us for the RMA return and we're going to put it in a box and we're going to mail it back to them. So ladies and gentlemen if you don't have something like this and this is really nice if you're in a hangar where you can plug it in and we hope whoever buys the project uh, Tiger does have a hanger for this. If you're out of side, you're going to want to use some other sort of heating system. Now, here's everything right here in the RMA box that uh, Tannis will approve for you and send you a label. So now you can send it back to them. And then as another treat for you, so we just don't talk about preheaters all night. Here's the little kitten. This is Tarzan, and he loves jumping in the bag that hangs on the door. So, ladies and gentlemen, with all of this about Tannis heaters, uh, you do want to preheat your engine before a flight. This is for good engine longevity. So, we hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks for watching, and have a great day flying your Grumman. You know, forget buying expensive toys for your kittens and cats. Um, we find that just taking the aircraft spruce box and the paper on the tile floor is more than enough amusement for them for hours.